Hello, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Pet McDonald, and in this video, we'll be learning the three to five player game Bloodborne, designed by Eric Lang and published by Cool Mini or Not Games. The Chalice Dungeons are dangerous places ruled by powerful beings. As hunters, you must band together to defeat monsters, collect trophies, and exit the dungeon. But beware, for not all hunters will leave alive. So, come join me at the table, and let's learn how to play. To set up, first choose or randomly select which of these final bosses you'll be facing, placing it face up in the center of the table. Each of the final bosses will have an effect here that is always active, so remember to take that into account during the game. Next, separate boss cards labeled here from the regular monsters. Then, randomly select three bosses and seven monsters to shuffle into a face-down dungeon deck, placing them next to the final boss. Each player now takes a hunter board and one of each of these trophy tokens, placing them on the matching spots of their player board here. They also each take a health dial and set it to eight. These are the starter cards. Have players take one of each to form their hand and give a random player the first player token. These are the upgrade cards. Shuffle them together into a face down deck in a central area, revealing one card per player. In this video, we'll be setting up for a three player game. Also place out these dice and blood echo tokens. Small ones count as one each and the larger as five. Then flip over the top card of the dungeon deck to see which challenge players will face first. Some monsters will have an effect that triggers when it comes into play, as listed here. If so, resolve that now. A monster's health is also shown on the bottom left hand corner. Place that number of blood echoes on the monster. In a four player game, every monster, including the bosses and final boss, gain one extra blood echo. And with five players, they gain two more. As mentioned though, we're setting up here for a three player game. Finally, all regular and final bosses, monsters, and starter cards not used in the setup can be returned to the box. And that's the setup. In Bloodborne, players will work together to defeat monsters while ensuring that they alone claim the most blood from their prey, as only the best hunter will leave the Chalice Dungeon alive. The game is played over a series of rounds consisting of eight steps, starting with choosing action cards. During this step, players secretly select an action card from their hand. When everyone is ready, they simultaneously reveal them. Before revealing, players can discuss the cards they intend to play, but may not show them in advance, and no one is required to play any card they have claimed. Next, it is time to transform weapons. All hunters who played this transform card in the previous step now simultaneously select and reveal a melee or ranged weapon from their hand. This transform step gives players the advantage of choosing a weapon after seeing their opponent's choices. Melee weapons have a red border and ranged weapons are blue. Other cards, like the Molotov cocktail, are not labeled as weapons and cannot be selected during this action. During the third step, any effects on played cards which are labeled as an instant effect resolve now. If several would trigger, start with the first player and resolve them clockwise. For example, the Hunter Pistol deals its damage immediately if it's the only one played. A weapon's damage is shown within this blood icon. When you deal damage, remove blood tokens from the monster equal to this value. These blood echoes are stored on your player board here and will be worth points if you can move them down to your bank. But we'll talk about that later. If the monster is killed during this step, skip the next three steps until you reach the hunter's dream. However, if the current monster is still alive, it attacks. The first player rolls the color of monster die indicated here on the card. The number rolled is the damage the monster will do. If the value shows a plus sign, roll the die again and add the numbers together and continue like this until you roll a value without a plus sign. Then subtract the grand total from each player's health dial, even from players who did not attack the monster this round. If any players have been reduced to zero health, they are dead. Any blood echoes currently in their collected area here are returned to the supply, but they don't lose any that are in their bank. After the monster attacks, it's time for the hunters to fight back. Starting with the first player and going clockwise, the hunters will deal damage to the current monster equal to the damage shown on their weapon. Dead hunters, or ones who have already dealt their damage, are skipped. As mentioned before, every token you remove from a monster is added to your collected blood. If you would deal more damage than there are tokens to collect, only collect as many as you are able. Once a monster has no blood remaining, it has been killed. Any player who has yet to deal damage to it will not get to do so. Players that dealt damage to a monster that was defeated this round also gain trophies matching each type shown in the bottom right corner. 
These are collected by adjusting the matching tracks on your player boards. Weapons that you play may have an effect that occurs either when you attack or when you kill a monster, so be sure to apply those effects when required. After the hunters have dealt their damage, if the monster still has blood remaining, it will escape, and you remove it from the game. If it has a listed effect that occurs when escaping, resolve it now, then remove it, keeping in mind that the effect even takes dead hunters into consideration. Monsters labeled as bosses will never escape, so leave them in play to be fought over multiple rounds until they are defeated. The next step is the Hunter's Dream. At this point, assuming they have survived, any player who played the Hunter's Dream card will bank all blood they've collected, moving it to this area on their player board. These banked blood echoes are now safe from being lost. Also note that if you played Hunter's Dream, you'll take half damage rounded down from every attack that round, so survival is a bit easier. Regardless of whether the Dreaming players died or not, they then take back into their hand all action cards previously played, including the Hunter's Dream. Now players that died or played the Hunter's Dream card reset their health to 8. Remember, the final boss has an effect which is always in play, in this case reducing a Hunter's maximum health to 6. In turn order, these players also take an upgrade card from the available options. These are not replaced as they are collected. At the end of the Hunter's Dream, refill the available cards back up to the number of players. If the deck would run out, then no more upgrades are added for the rest of the game. Players may never have more than 7 cards in their hand and use pile combined. If taking an upgrade would cause you to have 8 cards, you must immediately remove one of your cards from the game, but you may never choose to remove your Hunter's Dream. The final step is the end of the round. All players discard the cards they have played this turn into their personal discard pile, and then pass the first player marker to the left. Then, if the current monster or boss has been defeated, flip over a new monster from the dungeon deck and place blood tokens onto it equal to its health. Remembering to place extra tokens in a 4 or 5 player game, and resolving win revealed effects if necessary. The players will now begin a new round, starting with the choosing action card step. However, if the dungeon deck is empty at the end of a round, it's time to face the final boss. This boss is fought just like any other monster, except it has much higher health, and will always provide one of each type of trophy to players who have dealt damage to it on the round that it dies. Once this boss has been defeated, players bank any collected blood and the game is over. Now it is time for the players to determine their final score. First, each banked blood echo counts as a point. Then add the value of your trophy markers, which are worth the value of the space they are currently on. The player with the highest total score is the winner. In the case of a tie, the tied player with the most banked blood is the winner. If the tie persists, those players share victory and have escaped the dungeon together. And that's everything you need to know to play Bloodborne. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.